Good afternoon, Pastor David. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. You can see that we're in a different location. We're actually in the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. Tiberias. In Tiberias. And so uh, we've been on tour and uh, we are obviously in a different location, but yet we wanted to connect with you and, and join us as we are doing a special edition of, of Unfiltered. Mm -hmm. So uh, today, Pastor, or friends, uh, Pastor gave a devotion at this place called Caesarea Philippi. And it comes out of uh, Matthew chapter six, 16, where Jesus takes his disciples away from everybody uh, from their ministry, and they go to a place of rest. But Jesus spends some time with them, pouring into them. And, and it's interesting because we wonder why he took his disciples so far north. You know, that was a question that was brought up today. Uh, but Pastor, what was the important uh, thing that Jesus was teaching them in Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 16? Well, there was... Uh... I guess just to set the, um, the question up, I probably should speak a little bit about the setting. The setting was that it was in a place called Caesarea Philippi, which was a, uh, up into the north, and, but it was like a resort during the time of Christ. And so he took his men up there, as he often did in the Gospels, to spend time with them and minister to them. and. While he was there, he asked him what I call is the most important question. Because as he's there with the men and he's proceeding into his ministry, going further on, further in, he's wanting to bring them to a place of, of understanding just who he really is. But in order to do that, he asked them a question. He said, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And I was sharing today in that particular area that at one time there were there were many monuments to, to both um, men and gods. They had uh, temples, a temple that had been uh, erected in honor of Caesar Augustus. They had um, different uh, temples that were set up to worship Baal. And uh, so in, in the midst of man worship and, and uh, just pagan worship, foreign worship, demonic worship, Jesus asked the question, uh, who do men say that I am? So in the center of all of this activity and all of the things that are part of being Caesarea Philippi, he asked them the most important question. So they begin to answer, well, some say John, some say uh, Jeremiah, the, Elijah. They give different answers, one of the prophets and all. And so while we were there, I wanted to encourage the people to realize that that question is still being asked. And I broke it into a couple of things. I said, one, it, it is um, very common for uh, people to have opinions about mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And you can have people in churches with their opinions, even though they don't really know him through scripture, they have their opinions as to who he is. You see a lot of that in the church today, where people attend churches, but don't even know the reason they're there. And so people can influence other people as it regards to the things related to God. They can have their opinions about God. And so we're going to be influenced by those right. opinions, whether they're um, friends or whether they're uh, people on television or whether they be uh, instructors in our schools, they're going to have opinions. And so those opinions they have have a tendency of influencing the way we see. And if you're even in a church, but you're not reading the Bible, Hmm. then you're going to have your thoughts formed by people who don't know Christ. And so we asked the question, who do men say, say that I am? But he supplied the answer even in the question <laughs> because he said, the Son of Man. Well, that's out of Daniel 7, 13, where it speaks concerning the Son of Man as a messianic figure. So he, he said, I am Messiah, even in his question. That's what he was saying. So when they start answering, they begin to answer concerning you know men like John and Elijah and Jeremiah or prophet they they put Jesus in in a category of a superior person you know one anointed by God to declare the things of God and all of that but Jesus said to them but who do you say that I am and that was the most important question because you know in 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 the midst of all the opinions what do you believe right. and so when Simon Peter spoke up on behalf of the others and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That was the proper answer. 
You know, you are Messiah. You are the son of man. You are the one who has been anointed to set us free. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way he answered. And that's when Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven has. Oh. And so he's saying to him, this revelation that you've received didn't come fr just from your own carnal mind. This was a thought and an understanding that was provoked by the Spirit of God himself. And so as I was there sharing in this place, and Jesus had said to Simon, uh, you, are, you know, or Simon, I, you are Peter, I'm, and to you I give the king, keys to the kingdom of heaven and all. When he began to speak to them, he had said the kingdom that is being established, not even the gates of hell will prevail against it. Well, right directly behind us where we were doing the devotion is what was called during the day of Christ, uh, the gates of hell, which was a cave there that they said the nature God Pan sprang into mm -hmm. existence in. And so he's saying all the demonic, all the false, all man's opinions concerning how great man is, all of those things combined are all wrong. And the only thing that is right is what you just said, Simon Peter. And by the way, that wasn't something you initiated or thought of yourself. That is something my father has, has uh, given to you. That's a knowledge and understanding that only can come by the Spirit of God. And when he said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom, he wasn't giving them to Simon Peter alone because later on he has the same commission for all of the apostles. Right. So what he was saying is your declaration of faith the, the understanding of who I am is what I'm going to bless. Mm -hmm. Not you as, a, as a, the first pope, if you will, <laughs> but you have just declared on behalf of all believers uh, who I truly am. And the keys to the kingdom will be the proclamation of the gospel. And so we see that key handed to him when he, on the day of Pentecost, preaches a gospel message yes. and uh, opens up the door so people can enter in. And so that's what we did today. We were there in Caesarea Philippi. We've had a real long day today, but I think it was a very, very rich day. Mm. You know, and uh, one of the things I just want to close with, Pastor, there's a lot of Christians who call themselves Christians, nominal Christians, who don't even know who Jesus is. Of course not. And that's why the question is so important. Mm -hmm. Who do you say that I am? Yeah, it's not what your mom said. Right. It's right. not what your Sunday school teacher said. It's what do you say? Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for that. I want to remind our church family that on Wednesday evening, we have a guest speaker, Wes Bentley. Mm -hmm. uh, services start at 7 p.m. Invite your friends and family to come on out. And then on the 19th, uh, there will be a guest speaker, Mike McIntosh, yes, Michael B. who's going to come out and join in those services that are 8.30 and 10.45. And then on the 22nd, uh, you know, kind of looking forward, you're planning to be back as we celebrate yeah, we'll communion. Be, we'll be back. We'll do communion. And I'll be teaching out of Romans 2. Yes, and it'll be a great time. So invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Thank you guys for joining us. And uh, we want to say good, God bless you from Tiberius, Israel. Next time we see you, we'll be in Jerusalem. That's right. God bless you guys. Pastor David, thank you so much. Thank you.